Thank you for purchasing Underdeck. Enjoying the outdoors regardless of the weather is only a few steps away. Underdeck can be installed on virtually any size deck. Before you begin the installation, check to see that you have all of the necessary materials. Underdeck product consists of joist rails, collector panels, joist gutters, boundary gutters, water diverters, and foam weather stripping. Additional tools and supplies needed for installation include the following items. To prepare your deck for installation, look for any blocking that may exist between the joists and adjust its placement to allow at least four inches of clearance for the underdeck product. Also consider cleaning and painting the deck's ledger board and sideboards that are exposed to give a nice professional finish look that will match the underdeck. You are now ready to begin installation. Step 1. Installing water diverters and flashing. To ensure water is diverted away from the ledger board in the home, water diverters are installed along all sides of the deck that are connected to the home. Place water diverter against one side of joist and mark the diverter on the other side to get an accurate width. Then, trim using a tin snip to achieve a snug fit. If your ledger board has Z-flashing installed, use a screwdriver to lift the bottom edge, allowing you to work in the water diverter. Fasten the water diverter using two ACQ compliant nails or screws. For easy access for fastening, bend the water diverter down. Continue the full length of deck. If your home does not have Z-flashing installed, we recommend caulking across the top of the water diverter and applying extra fasteners. After attaching the water diverters, fasten a nail on each side to hold the water diverter into position, then seal both sides along the joist using a silicone-based caulk. Step 2. Chalking Lines for Joist Rails Accurate line placement is critical for proper drainage and for a finished uniform aesthetic appearance. First, double-check that your deck is level. This will allow you to correctly set the pitch lines, ensuring that the water will drain away from the home. Start where your deck connects to the home at the ledger board. Place a mark on the joist an inch and five-eighths up from the bottom. Move to outside of deck, rim joist, and snap a chalk line from the bottom of the joist up to the mark that you've just made on the ledger board. Repeat this step on both sides of all main joists and on the inside of the edge joists. Step 3. Attaching Joist Rails Attach your first joist rail an inch and a half from the ledger board with the bottom of the joist rail on the chalk line. Attach using three ACQ compliant fasteners. Locate and fasten each successive rail along the same line, maintaining a maximum inch and a half space between the rails for drainage. Repeat this step on both sides of all main joists and on the inside of the edge joists. Joist rails can be cut at the end of the joist to maintain the appropriate spacing. If you are installing a seamless gutter, Remember to allow the appropriate space at the end of the last joist rail for proper drainage into the gutter. After the joist rail installation, it's recommended to apply tar tape along the inside borders where boundary gutters will eventually go. Apply the tar tape along the top edge of the joist rails to divert water into the boundary gutters. Make sure tar tape covers all nail holes and top side of joist rails. As an extra precaution, apply a bead of caulk to the top edge of the tar tape. Step 4. Attaching the Collector Panels Measure the length of the joist space and cut collector panels an eighth inch shorter than the measurement. Make the cut using a utility knife and a straight edge. To ensure that the end facing the house does not get caught on a joist hanger during installation, cut out a notch on each corner. For joist spaces that are narrower, it will be necessary to trim the width of the collector panel. Simply measure the width of the space from the inside edge of one joist to the center of the next joist for your measurement. Do this at three points along the length of the joist for accuracy. Transfer your measurements to the collector panel and use a straight edge and a utility knife to cut the panel. Using a second set of hands to install the collector panel is preferred. Insert one long edge of the collector panel between the upper and lower flanges of the joist rails. Gently push the other side of the panel into joist rails creating an arch. Raise the panel until you can set the other side into its joist rails. Work your way down to the other end of joist space. Do not allow the panels to flatten out. A consistent arch is necessary for strength and drainage. To achieve a tight uniform fit along the ledger board, use a pencil to scribe the surface onto the collector panel. To do this, lay a carpenter's pencil flat against the ledger board and mark the line on the collector panel. Then pull out the end of the panel and trim the piece by hand. Push the collector panel back, tight against the ledger board. 
The collector panel should now be a quarter inch from the end rim board to allow for expansion. When you run into an obstacle such as a dryer vent or a fresh air return vent, we recommend finding a scrap panel to use as a template. Insert the template into the joist rails and run it up to the object to mark its width. Make cuts by hand to determine the depth and to get a nice fit around the obstacle. Now place the template over the collector panel to be used and transfer the pattern to it. Make the cut using a tin snip and install. Irregular dimensions of joist lumber can cause visible wave-like effects in the collector panels when installed, caused by tension of a narrowing joist space. Restoring an even appearance is simple. Just lift the affected portion of the collector panel out of its joist rail and shave off small strips until the buckling has been eliminated. Step 5. Installing Joist Gutters Measure the length of the joist and subtract a quarter inch for expansion. If you are installing an end gutter, measure from the ledger board to a quarter inch past the end of the last joist rail. For cutting the joist gutter, we recommend using a saw with a fine tooth OSB blade. To prepare the joist gutter for hanging, cut a small notch out of the flange on the end that will be along the home. This will keep it from catching on the existing joist hangers. Next, apply a foam weather strip at the house side end on the inside to create a barrier for moisture. Then seal it with a bead of silicone. On the other end of the joist gutter, cut four drip tabs so water that flows out will not run back up the gutter. To install, hold the joist gutter up to the bottom of the joist, spread open slightly while pushing up firmly until the gutter snaps into the joist rail and nests tightly against the collector panel. To install the boundary gutters, slide the back wall or flat side of the boundary gutter behind the joist rails until the boundary gutter snaps into place. If you are installing a seamless gutter, raise it into position until it touches the joist gutter on one side and fasten into place. Then set a slight pitch on the gutter and fasten where needed. Continue to divert the water away from the home by installing downspouts. Option: Installing the diverter piece. The exposed area at the end of the deck can be finished off using a diverter trim piece simply made from a collector panel. The diverter piece will also divert any water coming in at the end of the deck into the end gutter. Measure the distance from the back of the gutter to the outer rim board. Using a collector panel, bend a 90 degree angle with an aluminum siding break. Work the piece into position. Using an appropriate trim board to fashion into place. The system is now complete. Your comments and feedback are important to us. Please visit underdeck.com for any further assistance you may need. Thank you.